Shut up. Is anybody in that house? Shut up. Is there anyone? Is there anyone in the house? That's homeowner. Doesn't speak English, so we don't know if anybody's inside. On the afternoon of Friday, August 12th, South Metro received numerous 911 calls reporting heavy smoke coming from a house in Littleton. Station 12 had just been alerted to this call initially as an outside smoke investigation, but once those multiple callers started calling in what was going on, they were reporting a garage was fully engulfed with flames. This very intense helmet cam video takes you inside the cab of Ladder 12 from the perspective of their lieutenant driving down Broadway and what the smoke conditions look like. It will also take you around the structure in a 360 and show you the conditions at the front door as firefighters started to go inside to search for possible people trapped inside. Inside? Hey! Hey! Is anybody in that house? Is there anyone? Is there anyone in the house? Is there anybody in that house? What language do you speak? Hey! Hey! If you find out, let us know. Send it. That's homeowner. Doesn't speak English, so we don't know if anybody's inside. So we don't know if anybody's inside. I need gloves, one step. Go. Body lane. I 
tell you what, Smith. Alright, let's back out then. I just pulled up on scene on my dress and uh, go to the structure. Yeah, if you can check the trailer side, that's a great thing. I'm tired. Just so you can see the next thing, engine in. Spray some water in that front door. Command it. Now. Alright, good, you need to repeat. Engine 14 pulled on out. 14, go ahead and spot. You got a hydra right there on the corner. You might as well take it. And you'll be the fucking apparatus. You might have to spot behind line 12. Copy, we got it. We'll hook to this hydra. We'll be the fucking attack apparatus. Do it a little more. We'll start inside. We need a little more inside. Yeah, right there. Now pull out. Come on, let's go on the way. 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 Come on, let's Medical level alert, behind 18, 41. Tell him! Spot out of the way, go on deck, on the alpha side. Copy, on deck, alpha. I'm over here on the left. No, I'm at left. Command, Tower 18, on Zemo's my assignment. Go this way. Tower 18, gonna have you That's assist basement. letter 12, alpha, into your primary search. Encouraging copy, assist ladder 12 on a search. This is kitchen, right? Yeah. I'm in a wall. Ladder 12 alpha command. 12 alpha. 12 alpha. You can get a can on your primary search. I need to do a visit only. We're making our way to the first tour. Not complete yet. Okay. No visibility, we're working the first floor. Um, do you have, uh, I'm gonna push tower 18 for primary search of the basement. A firm, basement, A firm, straight, in basement straight in on the right. You with me? Copy, you're on the right. Medic 12, command. I think this kitchen is Medic 12. Go the living room and go left. Can on the fire attack, alpha side. We've got the majority of the fire. In this case, the alpha team, or the officer and the firefighter who sits behind the officer, will pair up and do an interior primary search of the house to look for victims. The outside team, or what we call the Bravo team, consists of the engineer who drives the truck and the firefighter who sits behind that person, and they are tasked with outside functions, which will often include fire attack if they have to act as an engine crew. So they have to be versatile and ready to react to any one of those job functions when they arrive on scene. Medic 12 was right behind the ladder crew, so those were additional firefighters who could assist with stretching the hose line and getting initial water on the fire to knock down the very intense heat coming from that garage. Ladder and Medic 12 did what we call a transitional attack, which means they knock down as much visible fire as they can from the exterior with a hose line, and then take a hose line inside to complete fire attack. In this case, what we learned was that before firefighters arrived, a good Samaritan who was passing by actually removed a person from one of the windows of the home and saved them from those smoky conditions. When firefighters went inside, they completed the primary search. Thankfully, no one was left inside the house. Fire had already extended from the fully engulfed garage into the kitchen and living area, and firefighters were able to stop that fire from progressing through the rest of the home. The rest of the home was still very severely damaged from smoke and heat. Investigators from the fire marshal's office determined that this was an electrical malfunction with a refrigerator in the garage that sparked the fire.
On Monday, August 15th, we received multiple phone calls where people reportedly hearing a loud boom and then seeing active fire. At this time, we also were experiencing a thunderstorm with lots of heavy rain and lightning moving through the area. And simultaneously to this call, we also had a water rescue going on. Firefighters arrived on scene and did see active fire coming from the gas meter on the side of the residential home. They quickly pulled a hose line to keep the fire from extending to the siding, and they were both inside and outside the home using thermal imaging cameras to measure the heat levels. Firefighters were unable to shut off the gas, and so we did call out the gas company, which when they arrived, they were able to dig a hole with a tractor and clamp the gas line, which did stop the active gas leak and active fire. Once the fire was out, the firefighters were able to confirm that there was no further extension into the home. As the call was wrapping up, firefighters learned that a nine-year-old boy was actually one of the ones who helped call in this incident. He was outside at the time, saw the active fire, went inside, told his dad, who then called 911 all before the firefighters arrived on scene. So after the call, we were able to present him with one of our South Metro Community Hero Challenge coins. On Friday, August 19th, Ladder 12 responded to a vehicle fire on Broadway, not terribly far from where the residential structure fire had occurred just a week before. This video gives you an up-close perspective on what firefighters deal with when they arrive at a car fire. Thank you. I'll confirm that, okay? Yep, thank you. Fuel tank break. Jump. Give me some foam. All right. Just hit it every once in a while. I got an engine coming. 
Some people who were watching PulsePoint closely noticed that another engine and the Decon 17 responded to this call. And the reason why the Decon unit responded was for fuel absorbent and to make sure that a hazardous materials incident didn't occur. Thankfully, no one was injured when this fire happened and it was mechanical in nature. Okay, and if you didn't already see it on our Facebook page, we are having our first ever contest. This year's NFPA Fire Prevention Week theme is Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape. And we are challenging all of you, our viewers, to design a helmet shield for us. And the winner's artwork will be made into a real helmet shield that will be worn by a member of South Metro during the second week of October for Fire Prevention Week. All right, it's our favorite time to do pet shout outs and we got quite a few different envelopes in the mail since the last time that we saw you all. So I'm happy to start this off. The first one comes to us from the Chattanooga Fire Department. Shout out to their PIO for watching and for sending us a patch. All right, the next one was hand delivered all the way from New Zealand by a gentleman named Ash who came to ride along with us. That's the New Zealand Fire Crest. The next one I have is pretty unique. This is the OCI Iowa Fertilizer Emergency Response Team. Never realize how much you shake until you're holding it real Holding that out it, after an morning arm workout and caffeine. Well, like nothing you can do to make it straight. Yeah, nothing at all. The next patch I have comes to us from Woodville Fire Department in Texas. And I've got two patches from Georgetown County. Here's the first one. And the second one from Georgetown County Technical Rescue Team. I've got one from the Essex Police Department. All the way from the UK. Yes. Thanks for sending that across the large pond. Uh, Westboro Fire EMS. And I've got one from the Ontario Fire Buff Associates. And the last one that I have comes from our very own Fire Marshal's Office. Thank you to everybody who sent us patches. If you'd like to purchase patches from South Metro, there's a link in the video description where you can buy not only our community patch from South Metro, but some of our station patches. And I think the Fire Marshal's patch is on there too. And if you like South Metro apparel, there's a separate link. If you're interested in some shirts from South Metro to represent our channel, that would be awesome. And if you haven't already subscribed, please give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, Leave us a comment or a question if you have any, and we will see you next time. Bye.